It's that time of year again. The days are getting shorter, the nights are drawing in, and there's a hint of chill in the night air. Where did the summer go? It's officially autumn, and although the long summer days are behind us, there's still something to celebrate. Yes, you've guessed it, it's harvest. And whilst this might seem like a rural idyll, I'm not actually in the country, I'm in the city. I'm in a farm in the heart of London, and I'm here to explore how we get from the fruits of the earth to the food on our plate. This week, I'll be cooking up a storm with celebrity chef Marcus Waring, finding out how faith can fight food poverty, and there's rousing hymns giving praise to God's own bounty. London, not a place that immediately makes you think of gathering in the annual harvest. Here in the heart of the city, you might say the links between the fruits of the earth and the heartbeat of our daily lives are at their weakest. This place is an oasis of calm in the middle of the urban jungle of East London and a great place to remind us city dwellers that our food doesn't actually begin its life on the supermarket shelf. And our first hymn, appropriately enough, was written by a London poet, Henry Alford. He was also a highly accomplished composer and translator of hymns. Now, this originally started life as a harvest song called After Harvest with seven verses. That hymn really does evoke images of idyllic rural life. And you know, when you live and work in the city, you sometimes get a huge urge to give it all up for a life in the country. 
And that certainly crossed my mind when I visited a farming family in Evesham, in the heart of the English countryside. Our family have been farming almost as far back as we can see. If we looked at the family tree, they all seem to be farmers. I just love it when the family can work together, when children can grow up on a farm. And there aren't big, big units, as you know now, in the country. And it's great. I'm sure it's highly efficient, but there's nothing to touch the family farm. And so my prayer is that family farms can keep going. I run the farm shop, so I'm on the selling side. I've got two brothers. Um, John does the, um, the bulk of the veg growing. Uh, he's also got the Hereford cattle. And then my other brother, Rich, has got pigs. He's got a few industrial units as well. Dad was actively trying to push us off the farm to do something else, but we, <laughs> we all did the opposite and came back. The Harpers have diversified into what's known as care farming, using everyday farming activities to help all kinds of people turn their lives around. We have people here basically who, who have had drug addictions. By the time they come here, they're already coming off them, and we help them to get off by doing a day's work, feed them well, and encourage them to start to get back into, into normal life again. It's great, actually, and, and the ethos, really, of, of every project on the farm is, is land-based, growing things, harvesting them, preparing them, cooking them. This is the basic ethos of all of the, of the projects. Basic, but it works. And, and if we can just plant one seed I mean, that, that really enthuses them, we see them changing, we see them starting to blossom. We are Christians. Whether we could call it a Christian farm, I don't know, but we, we try and set standards which we believe are Christian. We try and do things which we feel God is calling us to do. We don't demand that everybody else are Christians on the farm. But we'd like to feel that we can create an environment where people can come and feel at peace, they can feel loved, they can feel served well, and they might want to ask questions. <laughs>